morning, everyone. Buenos dias a todos. Recently, I was uh, on an airplane flying back to Brownsville not too long ago, and as has been the case recently, um, there were storms in the area. No? And so the pilot got on the uh, little speaker thing and said, um, there are storms in the area around Brownsville, but I think I will be able to avoid them. No? Entonces, cuando anunció el piloto en, uh, del avión que íbamos a sacarnos a Brownsville, pero con tormentas alrededor, me puse a, a mirar por la ventana. I started looking out the little window, you know, that they give you, praying that he would be able to avoid them. And I was struck because they were very visible, and it was kind of the sun was almost completely set, so it was kind of red in the in the skyline. No, se veía rojo todo el, el horizonte y las nubes muy grandes. They were just huge. It made me think, of course, that we're basically within the last hundred years the only people who ever seen clouds from that side. No, ver las nubes desde arriba que es algo impresionante. It's just a cloud, and you know that. But it's a mysterious thing, and it was you could see the lightning inside the clouds. No, las, los relámpagos que se movían desde una nube a otra nube, and it was kind of a, pues impresionante ver eso. Uh, and I was glad that he was able to avoid them, porque es bueno evitar la nube cuando está tan grande. And I don't, you know, from the bottom when we're here, we look up and we see clouds, we see the dark part, but then we don't see what's on the top side. Bueno, lo menciono, ¿no? Porque la nube tiene mucho que ver con lo que pasa hoy en el Evangelio. Because the cloud is sort of a mystery that, that is an image that has been used in Scripture since the very beginning to say something about God. La nube es una imagen impresionante que usan las Escrituras desde el principio para indicar algo sobre el misterio de Dios. And there I was flying and we were looking, I was looking at the cloud. Now, I've been on airplanes where you fly through the cloud, which is not very pleasant, no? Porque en algunos momentos tiene uno que pasar por dentro de la nube y es un poquito, pues, turbulento, ¿no? A little volcoso, no? You, you, you rock around, it's kind of a bumpy thing. I think it's good to have that image, porque es una imagen que, como digo, que se usa mucho en las escrituras para decir algo sobre Dios y nuestra relación con Él and our relation to Him. And the images of Scripture are very specifically chosen and when they're consistent from the very beginning up until the very end of the whole, of the whole scriptural account of the Bible from the Old to the New Testament, we should pay attention to that. Primero porque Moisés se acercó a la nube. Moses drew close to the cloud because God had manifested himself on the earth as a cloud, una nube, oscuro, pero con luz. It's in Exodus. We heard it in the first reading today. Today was from chapter 34. If you go back to 24, in the capítulo 24, hoy se lee del capítulo 34 de Exodus, pero el 24, Moisés entra a la nube. Moses goes into the cloud. And we know that today, when, when the chapter 34 is read, that, that God lowers his presence on the earth in this cloud, and, he's, and Moses keeps his distance, and, and God announces that he will be the God of this people. En el misterio de la nube, el Dios se manifiesta, Moisés se queda un poquito alejado, he prostrado and he bows down before the cloud and God announces that he will be the God of mercy and fidelity and compassion with his people. This cloud was also what led the people of Israel through the desert. No, la nube también guió el pueblo de Israel a salir del desierto, a llegar a la tierra prometida. No, this is, this is, this is a fundamental sort of, it's the mystery, it's light and it's dark and most of the time we're looking at it from the outside.
En el Nuevo Testamento aparece la nube otra vez. No, the, the cloud becomes an image very important in the New Testament when the Lord is baptized. No, cuando el Señor Jesús bautizado aparece la nube y la voz, este es mi hijo. And in the cloud, the same cloud, the mystery of God. The voice is heard, este es mi hijo, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And sometimes the, 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 the image of the dove is sort of, or the spirit is sort of hovering. And so the cloud is revealed to us as a manifestation of God who is spirit, who is light, and who is voice. Es un misterio, no, pero se manifiesta algo. Something is shown to us. Especially, we know a little bit more about this cloud. El Nuevo Testamento nos manifiesta algo más específico sobre el misterio de esta nube que representa a Dios. En primer lugar, Jesús está en medio de la nube. Jesus is in the middle of the cloud. At his baptism. Also at his transfiguration, también el Cristo transfigurado entre la nube. The cloud comes. Y la voz del Padre, and the voice, this is my son, este es, es el mío. Jesus is in the cloud. The Father's voice is heard about Jesus in the cloud, and the Spirit hovers over them. Esto es lo que se manifiesta en el Nuevo Testamento. It is a revelation. The coming of Christ into the world along the way is a revelation of this something we didn't really know before. Algo que no sabíamos sobre el misterio de Dios. Dios se manifiesta como que se, se rasga la vestidura, no para que se muestre lo que tiene Dios adentro. Y hay el Padre y, la, y el Hijo y el Espíritu moviéndose. Diosito en movimiento, Diosito la voz, el Padre. El este es mi hijo. Y lo pueden ver ustedes porque aquí está el Espíritu. ¿no? You can see him, you can hear him, you can hear the voice in this place, which is the cloud, which is the mystery of God, only God showing himself more fully to us in this mystery, which is really the mystery of Jesus showing us his relation. ¿no? El Hijo nos manifiesta su relación con el Padre, a través del Espíritu Santo que está alrededor. No, esta es la nube. This is the cloud. It's the mystery of God. It's an important image. And even though it may seem mysterious to us, it should be mysterious to us because we don't, we don't, we don't see so well. But that's okay. We know something. No, este es el misterio. No, no captamos completamente lo de Dios. We don't catch everything about God. We are not, we don't see him face to face. Pero si sabemos algo, But we do know something. Que a través de su obra, Dios se ha manifestado. But through his work of coming to us, God has shown himself. And what he has shown is the son comes from the father. This is my son. Listen to him. And the spirit is the cloud around which we are able to kind of enter into this relationship. Es que entramos en la nube. You see, especially at the transfiguration, the apostles are kind of in the cloud. En esta nube se, ve cosas, se ven cosas nuevas. You see new things in this cloud. Already the Gospels in the baptism of the Lord and in the transfiguration of the Lord and then in the passion of the Lord. Porque recuerdan que en la cruz, que es la tercera manifestación de la Trinidad, ¿no? There is a cloud. But it's very dark. And there is no voice. En esto se manifiesta Dios en la oscuridad de la nube, en la cruz. Dios manifestándose en la, en la entrega total de su vida en Cristo Jesús. Es, es la misma nube, pero bajo otro, otro aspecto. No, it's the cloud under a different, because this is how far God will go to show us what his love is about. Entonces, a nuestros ojos, la nube es muy oscura. Pero, 
es importante notar, ahí está el misterio de Dios. You could say there are three great manifestations in the New Testament of the Trinity already. The voice of the Father, the Spirit hovering, and Christ present, and it's the baptism, and it's the transfiguration, and it's the mountain of the cross. Porque Diosito se manifiesta en la montaña. God shows himself on the mountain. And so, this mountain of the cross then gives way because the Christ is risen from the dead, Easter Sunday. Se anuncia que este Cristo resucitado, and then the Christ breathes the Spirit on his disciples and on the world. Este Cristo resucitado, el Hijo del Padre, Respira el Espíritu Santo sobre sus discípulos y llega el Espíritu Santo en el mundo. And this light of the Holy Spirit allows us to, in a certain way, realize that by the mystery of God's coming into the world in Christ, we become part of it. No, esta no es cosa solamente que vemos desde lejos, como yo en el avión mirando la nube. It's not like me on the, in the airplane looking at the cloud over there. Estamos dentro de la nube. We are inside the cloud. Porque el Espíritu Santo ha sido enviado y es la experiencia de, de la Iglesia reconocer al Cristo en la nube del Espíritu Santo y dar gloria al Padre. No, you see, it's the work of the Christ risen to show his wounds and to breathe the Spirit so that we can see him as he is, as the Son of the Father and the movement of the Spirit, and we are there. No, es que... Es que lo, que lo que profesa la Iglesia en profesar la Santísima Trinidad no es tanto profesar que hay un Dios allá. When the Church professes faith in the Most Holy Trinity, it's not primarily a profession of the God who is three in one over there. It's a profession of the experience of the Church right here. Porque solamente por la, por la gracia del Espíritu Santo puede uno decir que Cristo es Señor. Hijo del Padre. Because the Spirit has come to us, and by the light of the Spirit, we know Jesus is Lord. We see him crucified and risen from the dead, Son of the Father. Y solamente porque estamos dentro de la nube podemos profesar la fe. Only because we have lived in this cloud, which is what the baptized do. Nos bautizados viven dentro de la nube. Del Espíritu que nos enseña Jesús, que nos muestra el Padre. Solamente en esta relación podemos profesar porque es algo que estamos viviendo. We can only profess this because the church lives by it. We do not announce a God who is a great mystery, but over there we do announce God is a great mystery. The scriptures teach it. We simply profess it. But we talk about and we announce the God that we have come to know inside the life that he gives us. Y vivir dentro de la vida de Dios a través del Espíritu Santo. Es reconocer Cristo como hermano, como hijo del Padre. Que nos muestra el rostro del Padre. Sometimes, perhaps, we as the baptized don't realize really what we have received. Me parece que a veces nosotros los bautizados ni nos damos cuenta que hemos recibido. No hemos recibido solamente una profesión de fe y de palabras, tres personas, un solo Dios, que es cierto, es la fe. Y se pronuncia, and we say it, because we know it. But primarily, principalmente, anunciamos algo que vivimos. Porque las tres personas se han manifestado a nosotros. Por su obra. Porque la Dios que conoce por su obra, que constantemente digo esto. No es una frase que, que uso mucho, ¿no? Dios conoce por su obra. God is known by his work. And the work is to give us the Spirit, which comes to us from Christ. And by the Spirit, we become able to see the things of God from the inside. 
Dice San Pablo, ¿no saben ustedes que tenemos la mente de Cristo? Do you not know that we have the mind of Christ, says St. Paul? ¿Qué quiere decir que vemos las cosas de Dios por dentro? We do profess the faith, but we profess what is primarily something that has been given to us and into which we move and live and have our being. Nos movemos a través de la Trinidad y dentro de la Trinidad, los bautizados. We live in this cloud. But it's not the kind of cloud that you can necessarily always see, although you do sometimes. Porque Dios nos da momentos para ver, ¿no? Un reojo, a little glimpse of what it is that is around us. Entonces, la fiesta de la Santísima Trinidad no es como una fiesta entre muchas fiestas. No, the, the feast of the Most Holy Trinity isn't like one feast amongst many others. Es la corona del misterio pascual. It's the crown of the Paschal mystery. Because once Christ is risen, and once he breathes the Spirit, which was last Sunday, Pentecost, se manifiesta. It is shown to us where we are. ¿Dónde estamos? Estamos con Cristo. En este mundo, in this world, we are with Christ, in the cloud of the Spirit, giving glory to the Father. That is who we are. And that is also where we are. Y específicamente durante el sacrificio de la misa estamos dentro de la nube. Porque aquí el Cristo se presenta en el altar elevado y el Padre nos dice este es mi hijo escúchenlo y a través del Espíritu Santo nos acercamos a él you see in the Eucharistic sacrifice it is the cloud we enter because it is the voice of the Father Christ is manifested to us he makes himself truly present here now ahorita aquí Cristo se manifiesta este es el Cordero de Dios y el Hijo nos dice, este es mi Hijo, escúchenlo. Y el Espíritu Santo nos atrae y nos involucra en el movimiento del Hijo hacia el Padre. And the Spirit pulls us into this gift of the Father, of the Son to us, and the Son back to the Father, y nos movemos. You see, it's not a passive thing. It's, you kind of have to let the cloud take you. Es lo que significa tener una visión sacramental, ¿no? It's to have the vision, the sacramental vision, que bajo la seña se vive la realidad. Under the signs, we live the reality of the God who comes to us, opens himself up to us, and invites us to step in and join with the Son in giving glory to the Father by the Spirit. Por eso, and I would ask you just as a, an in, an encouragement durante la misa. Pay particular attention to what it means. Pongan atención, especialmente hoy este día y todos los, todos los domingos, ¿no? En lo que, lo que significa lo que se dice después de la oración eucarística. The very last part of the Eucharistic prayer after the elements have been consecrated the body. Por Cristo, con Él y en Él, a ti Dios Padre omnipotente, honor y gloria en el Espíritu Santo. Ahí estamos. Through him, with him, in him, in, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Ahí estamos. That's where we are. Involucrados en, la, en el misterio de la Trinidad. We are pulled into the mystery of the Trinity. Hay que vivirlo para saber por qué lo profesamos. We have to live it to know why we profess it. One God, three persons, pero el misterio nos involucra. Hay que Diosito nos dé la luz para poder realmente darnos cuenta de cómo se ha acercado la nube a nosotros y cómo vivimos dentro de este misterio. That God would give us the light to see.
that he has drawn close to us and that he has given us the grace to live inside this cloud, to share his life and to join with Christ by the Spirit to the glory of the Father. Por Cristo con él y en él, en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, toda honor y toda gloria por los siglos de los siglos. Amen.